This tutorial is all about the halogens, their uses and their relative reactivity. First we look at the uses of some of these group 7 elements, the halogens, three uses of chlorine and one of iodine that you need to know as facts. So you need to learn that chlorine is used to sterilise water. Do not please say that chlorine is used in swimming pools. Very rarely is these days and you will not get the mark if you say this. It's used to sterilise water. In other words, it's used to kill the bugs in your drinking water. Secondly, chlorine is used to make pesticides. Many chemicals which are used by farmers contain chlorine atoms. And it's also used to make plastics. Specifically, it's used to make PVC or polyvinyl chloride. Finally, a use of iodine is to sterilise wounds. And there's a picture there of a solution of iodine which is used to sterilise wounds, in other words, as a sort of antiseptic. Next we have to learn about the displacement reactions of group 7, which tell us a little more about the reactivity of one halogen compared with another. You also have to know the word equations and balance symbol equations for the reactions that take place. A method that you might have used to do this experiment is to add solutions of one halogen, for example chlorine, to solutions of a halide, for example it might be sodium bromide or potassium iodide, for example. Now in order to tell the products of these reactions what we often do first is to add each of the halogen solutions to an organic liquid like hexane. If you shake hexane, which starts off as a colour solution, with solutions in water of chlorine, bromine and iodine, we get quite distinctively coloured solutions. Iodine gives us a purple colour in the hexane layer, bromine an orange colour and chlorine a colourless. We can use these colours to see whether these halogens are made as products of chemical reactions. So what we do is we set up a matrix adding each halogen solution in water to each halide in water and adding a hexane layer to make the changing colour more obvious. When we do this we see that certain combinations react and certain ones don't. We see that chlorine reacts with potassium bromide to make bromine which shows as an orange colour in the hexane layer and chlorine also reacts with potassium iodide to make iodine, which is shown as a purple solution. We also see that bromine reacts with potassium iodide to make iodine, which shows as a purple colour. All of the other colours are the colour of the halogen that we start with, and therefore there's no reaction in these ones. Now, as a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive halogen from its compound in solution, this tells us that the more reactive halogens are at the top of the group. For example, chlorine will displace or push out bromine from a solution of its salt from potassium bromide to leave bromine and potassium chloride. In symbols, chlorine, Cl2, reacts with potassium bromide, KBr, to make bromine, Br2, and potassium chloride, KCl. Now this doesn't balance at the moment because there's two chlorines on the left and one on the right, so put a two in there, now two potassiums, two in there which balances up the bromines. Also, chlorine will react with potassium iodide to make iodine and leave behind a solution of potassium chloride. Again, a balanced equation will be broadly similar. Cl2 plus 2Ki would give I2 plus 2KCl. And finally, bromine, remember, reacted with potassium iodide to give a purple solution of iodine and leaves behind potassium bromide. And again, Br2 in this case, plus 2Ki 
gives I2 plus 2KBr. So you need to be able to recall the reactivity of the group 7 elements and how they vary down the group. We saw in the experiment that chlorine will displace bromine, so chlorine is more reactive than bromine, and bromine will displace iodine, so bromine is more reactive than iodine. So reactivity decreases as you go down the group. This question is about the halogens and their reactions. Write down two uses of chlorine. Well, you have to learn three of them. Two of them, for example, are making PVC plastic. and sterilizing water. And bromine, chlorine and iodine are halogens. Put these in order of reactivity with the most reactive first. Well, you'd look at the um, position of these halogens in the periodic table in your exam paper. You'd see that they get uh, less reactive as you go down the group. So the least reactive of these three is iodine then bromine, and the most reactive of these three is chlorine. Now a question about displacement reactions. Chlorine water is added to a solution of sodium iodide and you get a brown solution is formed. Similar experiments can be done with chlorine water and sodium bromide, bromine water and sodium iodide, iodine and sodium bromide. And look at the table, it shows the results from these and other experiments. We can see that Chlorine should be the most reactive and it therefore displaces the bromine out of solution, give this orange solution. This is the colour in water because there's no hexane added. And the chlorine reacts with sodium iodide to give a brown solution here of iodine. So it seems that the brown solution is the presence of iodine, the orange solution is the presence of bromine. Now we're asked what happens when we add bromine to sodium iodide? Well, bromine is more reactive than iodine, so it should displace iodine from the solution. And the colour that we should get should be the same as the one next to it. It should be a brown solution. And there we have it. There's the answers. So the uses of chlorine, we're allowed to say, sterilises water or water purification or kills bacteria in water or killing microbes in water or water treatment or some alternative wording. Making plastics or making PVC and making pesticides. Those are the three which are on the specification. It says ignore references to swimming pools unless qualified. So that's your warning. Then we've got the order which is chlorine followed by bromine followed by iodine. And finally the displacement reaction giving us a brown solution of iodine. Now we need to explain why group seven elements have got similar properties. Here's the elements in group seven. And of course, we remember that elements are put into the same vertical group of the periodic table because they have similar atoms. Each of these will have seven outer electrons. And of course, if they have seven electrons each, that means that they all will react in order to gain one electron to become more stable. And they'll all do this in similar ways, so the elements all have similar reactions. Another past paper question then. Chlorine's a green gas, bromine's an orange liquid, iodine's a solid. What colour is it? Well, it's a grey solid. That's what it says on the specification anyway. Chlorine, bromine and iodine are all in group 7 of the periodic table. They all react in a similar way. Explain why using ideas about electronic structure. It's only one mark here, so we're only having to make one point. They all have seven outer electrons. One of the halogens is used to sterilize cuts and wounds. Which one? Well, from the specification, this one is iodine. And chlorine will react with the solution of potassium iodide to make potassium chloride. This is displacement reaction. Complete the word equation where we're told that one of the products is potassium chloride. So we'll write that one in. And the other one is fairly obvious. Well, if we're starting off with chlorine and potassium iodide and the chlorine has swapped partners um, with the iodine, 
joined up with the potassium, then that leaves the iodine all on its own. In this kind of question, you just have to be careful about the endings. When the element is on its own, like in iodine and chlorine, ends in ene, whereas when it's in the compound, it ends in ide.